Welcome to Excel magic trick number 1,481. Hey, in this video, we got a lookup bulk discount product price from multiple tables. And we're going to see the amazing new Excel 2016 switch function and the indirect function. Now, this is 1481. We did a similar lookup in 1480 and 1479. But in those videos, we had a single table. Here we have one, two, three, four different tables. Each one of the products, Quad, Carlota, Sunshine, and Bellin, have a different set of unit bulk quantity hurdles. So for the Bellin, if you sell between 256 and 500, the price is 259. 500 or more, 1050. If we're looking up the quad, here's the quad 96. We need to find the right category, look up the price, and bring it back. Now, actually, I have done a few videos on looking up from multiple tables. If you want to see the most comprehensive one, go see Excel Match Trick 1316. I show you all the different ways. I'm going to showcase just the two best ones here. Now, I'm actually going to start off with the switch function. Now, the switch function is only in Excel 2016 if you have Office 365. And the way the switch is going to work is similar to the choose function, if you've ever used the choose function. Switch and choose allow us to choose between multiple objects. Now, switch and the choose function can actually look up tables, cell references, text values, numbers, formulas. It's just like the Swiss Army knife of lookup. Now, the way switch is going to work is there's an expression. There's the expression. All that means is that's the thing that's going to try and be matched up with either Quad, Carlota, Sunshine, or Bellin. For this particular example, because the expression is quad, later in the function, when it sees quad, it'll know to get this table. Now, comma, value. I'm going to lock it on the quad, F4. Now, if you watch videos at Excel is Fun, you have seen the if function and array operations where you actually directly match Hey, is that equal to this? But in switch, you simply list this once, and then the value here, it's as if we're saying, is that value equal to what's ever in B15? Now, comma. Just as in the if function, you have a value if true, that's going to be the result. Result 1 if value 1 matches up with expression. So the result is going to be the whole table. Now I need to hit the F4 key to lock it. Comma. Now this function argument gets even more amazing. It says default or value 2. Then it has a comma and result 2. What this construction means with the square bracket is if you have no more matches to try and make, just as in the value if false argument in if, you put a default table. But if you still have more values and more results, then you continue on. Well, we do have more. I'm going to click on the Carlota. That's value 2. Now I hit the F4, comma, and the result 2. Well, if that happens to be Carlota matching up with that, then I want this whole table. Now I'm going to lock it with the F4 key. Now watch this comma. Now we get to Default or value 3 and result 3. Well, we do have a value 3. Sunshine, lock it with the F4 key. Comma, result 3, that's the third table. Lock it with the F4 key. Comma, and this is where we finally get to the default. We're not using value 4 and result 4. So the default, that's the last table. That's if it happens to be Bellin. I'm going to lock it with the F4 key. Close parentheses. Now, if I enter this, it's ridiculous because a formula can't return many items to the cell. 
but we could check it. F2, with my cursor at the end, I'm going to hit the F9 key to evaluate this. And sure enough, if we look quad, here's quad, 0, 5, 10, 50, 100, 0 with a 43, 69, 5 with a 40, 10, and so on. All the way to the last possibility, 100 with a price of 20.1. Now I'm going to Control Z. Now we simply put switch inside of VLOOKUP. So I'm going to say VLOOKUP, the lookup value. Well, wait a second. I thought we already had this whole table in there. That's just the right table. We still need to provide VLOOKUP, the actual units lookup value. Now I comma. Remember, switch is just delivering one of these tables. So now lookup value will just look through the first column in whichever table switch delivers. Now I come to the end. I'm still looking at the screen tip here for VLOOKUP, comma, column index number. It's always going to be 3. So I type a 3. I can see this way over here. There's the 3, comma. We're doing approximate match, and that's the default. So I am not going to even put that in. Backspace. Remember, if you're doing approximate match for VLOOKUP, you always put the close parentheses after the column number. And that amazing formula will work. Control Enter. And if I were to copy it down, if I got all the cell references correct, 96 for Carlota. It races through, it finds the first bigger one, jumps back. 96 Carlota, 1437. If I were to change this to Sunshine, 96 Sunshine, it's going over to the Sunshine table. 96, it should be 1595, and it is. All right, I love that. I used to use the choose all the time. I am now sold on Switch. There are many ways to have multiple lookup tables, but Switch just seems the most straightforward and easy. Now, I'm going to delete this one down here because actually the indirect method is going to be even easier. Now, what we need to do first is I actually have to use the define name feature and name each one of these tables. So I'm going to highlight the first table, go up to the name box, and type quad with no spaces and enter. Now, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to come up to the name box, Carlota. I better spell it right because that's going to matter. Come over here, come up to the name box, Sunshine, and Enter. Highlight the Bellin table. Come up here, Bellin, and Enter. Now I want to make sure by going to the Formulas ribbon tab over to Define Names Name Manager or use the keyboard Control F3. I want to make sure that I got each one of the names. And sure enough, I did. The Carlota AN, that's the table on the answer sheet. If you made a mistake with the range or the name, you would have to come here, click Edit, and Edit. We have our names. Now I'm going to come over here and simply use VLOOKUP, VL tab. For lookup value, there is the lookup value. That's the units, the item defined in the first column. Comma, table array. Well, guess what? I already have the name of the table right there. Comma, third column, three. Close parentheses and enter. Uh-oh, that's not going to work. And the reason why, F2, is because if I highlight that, and hit the F9 key to evaluate, uh-oh, that's just text. A formula cannot interpret text. That means the letters S-U-N, shine. It cannot interpret text as a reference. No problem. Control-Z. There is a special function in Excel called indirect. And if you read the screen tip, it says returns the reference specified by a text string. That's all indirect does. Its only job is to take something that is text that actually represents a reference and convert it to the reference. So now in table array, if I highlight indirect and hit the F9 key, it better give me the sunshine table. And if you look through here, 
it gives me exactly the sunshine table. Control Z. Look at how short and simple that is. We just use some defined names, then use indirect to actually look at the product name, which we smartly named each one of our tables. When I use the dropdown for Bellin, 96, it raced over, found the right category, got 1845, and brought it back to the cell. Now, the only drawback to indirect with VLOOKUP F2 is that it is a volatile function. That means anytime you do anything, like insert a column or put a formula and hit Enter, a volatile function like indirect will recalculate. Now, for a small Excel solution like this, it'll make zero difference. But some workbooks have lots of VLOOKUPs, maybe hundreds. They have huge lookup tables. And if there are a lot of indirects, then things can start to slow down because everything's recalculating all the time. But for this example, that is absolutely beautiful. Another beautiful example, switch and VLOOKUP. All right, in this video, we saw how to look up from multiple tables the units and return the price. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next video.